I, I'm really interested, especially from like Susan and Landon, your thoughts on, first of all, if you knew anything about the Black National Anthem, because I can say in the Black church, I mean, I grew up having to learn all the verses. <laughs> we, you know, we sang it like all the time, not just during Black like, History Month. Um, and also I had to learn the history of it, that it was a poem written to Abraham Lincoln after the Civil War. So like it definitely, in a lot of ways, is extremely patriotic, but it seems to be being received in a poor manner. And I don't know if it's because people don't know the story behind it or if people really think Black people sing it instead of the national anthem, which I've never, ever, ever, ever had happen. <laughs> um, just, I'm just interested in kind of, I, I don't understand the vitriol around it. It's so funny because I have that on my list of topics here. I wrote down lift every voice and sing as something to talk about. <laughs> I think it's, it's an amazingly beautiful song that I didn't know anything about until a few years ago. Um, and I've got no problem with it being sung. It's a, just, a, it's beautiful. The words are beautiful. The music is beautiful. And, it, and she did a great job singing it yesterday. Um, I, maybe the vitriol comes from the fact that it's called the Black National Anthem. So I, mean, I think that might be where the, the rub is um, because it's an anthem for sure, but is it, does that, is that imply when people call it that, does it imply we are two separate people, two separate cultures and, and, and nations? And um, maybe that's where the rub is. Yeah, I don't have any problem be. with it called, called yeah. that. But, and, 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 and sure, do the Star Spangled Banner as well. I mean, that, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I know, it initially was just called a hymn, Lift Every Voice and yeah. Sing. It was adopted as the Black National Anthem in like the 1920s or whatever. So the song has, and then yesterday, one of the one of the reasons it was sung is it was like the 123rd or 24th anniversary of the song. So it's been around a really, really long time. Yeah. And uh, it was the first time two Black quarterbacks ever started the Super Bowl. Yes, yeah. yes. That's also why it was, was, was important. And there was a Black female coach on the Philadelphia Eagles mm -hmm. um, sidelines as well. Oh, wow. So there is a lot of symbolism behind it being sung. I think also even understanding, you know, especially in the years that it was, it was first adopted as the anthem, the lyrics rang more true to the Black experience than the national anthem um, in and of itself. I mean, if you think of it being sung in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s when Black people couldn't even vote, right? Um, but now it also just being a tradition, like kind of similar to you, Susan, you know, aside from being forced to memorize it. When I do stop and think about the lyrics, it is a beautiful song in terms of, you know, how far we have come in it really representing a big part of the African-American struggle. Um, it's a yeah, hopeful it, it, song. It, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a hopeful you know, about the future. And that's, what, that's what's so beautiful about it, knowing when it was written and there was so much more horrible stuff to go through yet. And yet there was still hope. That's... I, got, I just got good. I mean, it's just goosebumps. It's great. So what and makes and the a, feel threatened by that? Yeah, yeah. Calling it the black, calling it the national anthem. That's the calling it the, the black is. national anthem. Yeah. So I saw a article. I think it was a news station out of Alabama, and I just saw the headline of the article, but it said something to the effect of raise every voice and sing the so-called national black anthem sang at the Super Bowl. I was like. Whoa. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it's definitely, yeah. That definitely. Well, is like, well, I think that, that implies that this, it implies <laughs> that you're saying when you call it that. I think they're saying it implies that the Star Spangled Banner is not your is you know you're not really identifying as American. Mm -hmm. That's not your anthem. You're de defining as Black and not American. I don't. I'm. I'm just. I, that's not what I feel. No, I got I'm, you. I'm being. At the, think, I'm, I'm trying to get into the mindset. But I think if people actually instead of just focusing on the headline as we often do with most things and actually paid attention to the words the lyrics are not divisive at all it's not literally all. about making progress and mm -hmm. being a whole nation and everyone being equal when we've come so far so. yeah that's how, right it talks about what our dark past has taught us yeah. It's you more know, meaningful than the star the last line is true to our god true to our native land i mean yeah. it's yeah. Landon, you had some thoughts too. What were you wanting to share or ask? No, I, I really don't know much about it, honestly. Um, I mean, I will say that I, I'm guessing because I, you know, I've, I am 
from conservative circles. And I'm guessing that, you know, it's it's an interpretation of exclusion of the, it's basically like, like Susan said, I'm guessing everybody interprets the name as exclusion of the other national anthem. So, yeah. um, and I guarantee that 95% of people have not actually read it who um, criticize it. So, and yeah. know that those headlines that you see and those that negativity is such a, a minority um, that they're, they just, you know, they want us to hate each other. So they, they hype up the worst part yeah, of each side. Right. And that, that to me, that's the worst, the worst attitude about that. To watch the rest of that episode, go ahead and click the video below me. To see a different compelling Healing Race episode, you can click the video below me. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.